going on everybody welcome back to the channel in today's video we're going to be talking about reasons why i never buy another honda rubicon this is my 2021 honda rubicon 520 with the dct transmission i've got 1600 miles on it 220 hours and a lot of experience with honda rubicons as some of you may know i've owned this is my fourth honda this is my third honda rubicon i've had a 2019 foot shift a 2020 foot shift and a 21 DCT. So I'm pretty experienced when it comes to talking about these units. So yeah, stay tuned. Today's video, that's what we're gonna talk about. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we're gonna be talking about my 2021 Honda Rubicon 520. Once again, this is the DCT model with electric power steering. This unit has 1600 miles on it, 220 hours and apparently a pretty flat tire it's probably not flat it's probably just really eh, low all of them seem low but that's no big deal so in today's video we're going to be talking about why i'll never buy another honda honda rubicon that is so let's just start out by saying this four-wheeler has been a great unit served me well for a while now it's the longest i've ever owned a new four-wheeler without trading it in getting another one this is the longest I've went without totally destroying one. I've had this one since, when did I get this? Like the end of July in 2021. So I've had it, what, almost a year and five months, something like that. Overall, very happy with the experience. No major complaints. I've had a few issues with this one that I haven't had with other ones, such as the rear main shaft leaking out of the rear, the rear of the motor there. And the new, or when it was brand new, that front wheel bearing come out at 400 miles other than that no real problems i've had some plastics fall apart and break which isn't no major problem just minor so i've had plastic break i've had issues here as you can see <laughs> most of that was self-inflicted uh we've had this happen with the shock so anyways like i said minor issues nothing major we've had a lot of damage Definitely have had a lot of damage. You can see it's pretty beat up. Front bumper's seen its better days. But overall, I mean, no complaints, no problems. No complaints in the quality department anyway, I should say. Anyways, you're probably wondering, why wouldn't you ever buy another one then? Well, the answer is pretty simple. I've had four Hondas, and they all look the same. Honda lacks innovation in certain ways. Now, they've come out with the DCT. They've come out with, you know, great front diff lock. They've come out with a very comfortable, very nice four-wheeler. However, I don't care how great you make something or how much you enjoy it, you do get tired of it. And I've owned Hondas for, what, almost four years now? And I'm slapped tired of the same thing. There's nothing different. The last four I've had, for example... Have all had the exact same suspension, the exact same plastic, the exact same controls up here, the exact same display. Nothing really changes. They've all had no power. They've all been very slow. They've all been reliable, and that's all fine, but I'm tired of it. So, why I won't buy another one? Yamaha. They're kind of low on innovation too, but at least it's something different. Uh, they look great. You know, they're very reliable, I should say. That's hard to say for me because my 18 I had was junk, as some of you may know. No big deal. Overall, Yamaha's a great brand. Wouldn't mind having another one. If I got one, it'd be the Grizzly for sure. Uh, they obviously make one of the better belt drive systems out there. Nobody's ever had a lot of issues out of the belt. They offer a 10-year belt warranty on the Yamaha. That's another reason to consider a Yamaha. Don't be scared of the belt drive. They back up a 10-year warranty. Uh, Polaris, now, they have recently changed the Polaris Sportsman, the way they look, and a few things about them. One major thing being they offer ride command. So I don't know if it's a 7 or 8-inch display. Either way, you get a big, nice display as an option on a four-wheeler with Bluetooth for aftermarket uh, speakers. You have navigation, you know, their whole trail command or whatever they call it system. To navigate communicate with other people you're riding with along with all the gauges being on a big screen 
So that makes me kind of lean towards wanting a new Polaris. My dad's recently ordered a new Polaris, what is it called, Polaris Ranger, the 1000 North Star, with the heating and air, the radio, all the goodies, power windows. So I'm going to see off of that, you know, how good Polaris is. I've never owned a Polaris, so I'd like to have one. Can-Am, you know, they're cool, but I just don't really have any need to try one. I don't really have any desire. And they're kind of overplayed. Everybody has a Can-Am. I'd love to try a new Polaris, especially a 570 that's fully loaded. I mean, that would be super awesome. So that's something in the future to think about. Honda, I wish you would invent something new. Um, if Honda come out with another four-wheeler and, you know, they had a bigger screen, they had some new innovations, some new looks... Maybe some more power. I'd be interested in trying it. Now, where I'm from in North Carolina, this right here was the standard because you went off-roading a lot. You wanted a great four-wheeler in the mud and off-road. So you wanted a diff lock. You wanted four-wheel drive. You wanted a lot of ground clearance. That's exactly what this offers. Power and everything else, not so much. Now that I moved out here in the wonderful state of Montana, the beautiful views and lots of trails to explore, lots of roads to drive on, you want something with a little more power, a little more comfort. And that's kind of why I'm leaning towards the Polaris. Um, obviously, Polaris, Yamaha, and Can-Am all offer four-wheelers with more power than Honda. But, you know, it takes a little bit more than just power to sell me on something. The Polaris right now has my attention a lot with that big screen. Uh, all obviously love the front diff on the Polaris a lot better than the Can-Am. Overall, I think they make a better four-wheeler. I don't know. I've never had experience with one. So we will have to try it on our own to make sure that we like it. And I'll keep you guys updated if we get one and what I think about it, how I like it, problems we have, all the things of that nature. Anyways, let's move our homemade tripod, let's find a new location to continue talking. We'll go on a ride too. I'm also tired of the squeaky bushings. Like I said, we'll go drop this tripod and get some footage of us riding. I guess I should say talking and riding because I'm not going to show any third person riding in this video. There's no reason to. It's not what this video is about. This video is about information. Reasons I'll never own one of these. Well, okay, I said own another one is what I meant to say. So, another thing that, that's important to note, I don't plan on getting rid of this four-wheeler, period. I plan on keeping it forever. Uh, it's just been a good four-wheeler. I don't have any reason to get rid of it. Uh, I think it'll serve as a great farm four-wheeler just to keep here uh, at the home. <coughs> Excuse me. Be a great four-wheeler to keep here to use for work. I want something newer, less abused uh, to have to go riding out on the road and out on the trails. We should really consider putting some air in these tires before we go on a ride, but I'm really not too concerned about it as long as you guys aren't. I don't think you are because you're not here to tell me if you are or not. It's a little bit low little bit low good how's this other front one a little bit low got to make sure we have our shades on before we hit the road because I don't like bugs in my eyeballs here's a quick display of the mileage and all the information okay so now we're off we're gonna go on a quick ride around the block and have a conversation, enjoy the countryside, and talk more about the Hondas. There's the two old ones, the 85 and the 86. I don't think I ever shared with you guys after I made the video of comparing this to the 85. Me and my cousin Daniel got in a wreck right up here at the gravel pit. Uh, he was making a left turn and I was going straight and I happened to go straight into him and crush the fender, break the, the uh, hub, so I had to replace it. $125 later, got a new tie rod, new hub installed on the 85. Let's do a quick little acceleration here from zero. We're just going to go full throttle, two-wheel drive, non-aerodynamic mode. Hopefully we don't lose the hat. Zip up this coat, it's a little too cold for all that nonsense. Um, 
telling you what. <laughs> we're gonna have to go repeat that in vertical for a uh, YouTube short. That's what we're gonna have to do. Honda Rubicon top speed. I guess you could also just call it acceleration. Uh, zero to 45 or 48 on almost flat 27 inch tires. Well, we've officially filmed that. Let's get back home. Too cold out here on this road. Basically to sum it up, I'm not saying this is a bad unit, a bad four-wheeler to buy. I'm just saying I'm not gonna buy another one because the lack of innovation, the lack of change, I'm ready to try something else. I am slight bored with the Honda Rubicon and Hondas in general. So wish me luck. I'm gonna try out another four-wheeler here soon, hopefully. Uh, just, you know, gotta make sure we're investing money in the right places. So might not be today, might not be tomorrow, might not be next year, we'll never know. But uh, stay tuned. If you guys enjoyed the video, please leave a like on it. If you care to stay updated on the situations and, uh, you know, future investments, what we do here, uh, subscribe to the channel. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.